Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongeth to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakar Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. Okay, who we reverence and double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few brothers and sisters listening and learning in the hopes of being saved and to you brothers that are giving diligence to make according and election sure out here another day i want to say to what to what you how to what you how by sham you have a shy for giving me another day to what to teach this word and again i want to say this as well our whole life i can't look i can't speak for all but our whole life is supposed to be dedicated to this ministry our whole life, our everything is supposed to be dedicated to this ministry. Everything. Everything is secondary. Everything else is secondary. Alright, so I'm just going to flow with the Spirit. Whatever the Lord Yahushua gives me, I'm just going to flow with it. We're going to start from Romans 12. And it says, I besiege you. So if you're besieging something, a besiege is a request. And this is a request by Paul. Wherefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, all right, that you present your bodies. So if you're presenting something, you're there, you're present. You could be seen, you could be heard. Your bodies, a living sacrifice. So Lord, he requires that we present our bodies a living sacrifice. So if you're presenting your body a living sacrifice, what does that mean? You're dedicating your time. You're dedicating what? Your body. Your body is the sacrifice. Your time is the sacrifice. That's your sacrifice. So Yahweh he sees his men that are doing that. And he's well pleased with that. Depending on what the sacrifice is. Depending if the sacrifice is sincere. Because you can still, you could be going out. You could be going out on Saturdays or so and so forth. But you're not really there. You're not really passionate about the truth. This is what you have just looking at. And it says, holy. So it has to be holy, acceptable. So holy. What makes you holy when you're separate from this world? You're keeping the laws, but also being separate from this world. That's what makes you holy. So the longer you're in this truth, you don't really have attachments with the people of this world. You do what you have to do. You use the world, but you don't abuse it. But as in terms of being of the world you're not of the world the spirit of the world has consumed a lot of men this this ain't for me to be um malicious because there's no malicious intent but the spirit of the world has consumed men and that's why they're not able to put this truth before everything else every single day you're supposed to be thinking about the truth every single day breathe eat sleep this word you're gonna have downtime but this should this should come first an acceptable so a sacrifice you're doing a sacrifice but there's things that are needed in that sacrifice holy and acceptable so when we're doing a sacrifice it also needs to be acceptable unto Yahweh Shai an acceptable sacrifice so it can't just be oh, I just wanna I'm just doing it so to get the elder apostles or whoever off my back so people think no it has to be acceptable time dedication studying Fasting, praying, all these different things, taking up, building, building up your relationship between you and Yahweh Shai. Because a lot of men, they even have a problem with that. And that's that's mad in itself. Because again, when you don't have nobody around you, I just want to put this out there. You know when Jacob's trouble happens, it really gets mad out here. And there's no... The camps are not on the highways and byways. And when there's no YouTube, what's going to happen? Are you going to be around brothers? Some of you may be lucky to be around Akiyam. But 10 times out of 10, you're going to be by yourself. So now you're by yourself. That means you're not going to be with a body. You're not going to have a body around you. So does that mean now you're not in this time that the Lord ain't dealing with you? 
Does that mean that? Because you're, you're no longer communicating with anybody. Because this is what it's going to come to. This is what I mean building up a relationship between you and Yahweh Shai. Do we have teachers? Do we have elders? Do we have tutors to teach us? Yes. But the main thing is what? Building you up. This is what this whole truth is about. The Apostle Paul, Timothy, all the Apostles, Peter, they were teaching you what to draw nigh unto Yahweh Shai. Not so much unto them. This is what this truth is about. They were teaching you how to get closer to Yahweh Shai. Men are teaching you how to get closer to a camp or to a body, which we have a body, which is beautiful because it's needed. You have the body in the scriptures, Corinthians, the church of Ephesians. But Yahweh Shai, what was he always um, building you up to do? To have belief in him. Because what happens if a man falls out? What happens if a man falls out? What, if a, what happens if a man loses discernment? What happens if a man becomes corrupt? Are you still going to keep your wits? Are you still going to believe? This is why you have to build up your relationship between you and Yahweh Shai. Because it's the same thing, what, Saturday's gone, camp day on Saturday. You had men out there, but what spirit were they in? A reasonable sacrifice and verse 1 verse 2 and be not conformed so what is conforming when you're conformed what does it mean con what is it's a drain drain text con meaning with formed joint be not conformed with this world and we don't want to be conformed with this world at all be not conformed with this world joint with this world be conformist is this particular things we have to do in this society Example, you, you're not going to cross, cross a red light. I know some of you probably have when you're driving, but that's conformity. Okay? When you go to a store, you're going to pay for the product that you took off the shelf. That's some form what, of conformity. You're not just going to leave, leave from the store with it. So there's particular laws we still conf conform to. You pay your bills and so forth. Okay? But I'm talking about in terms of conforming to this system, conforming to this world. And the less you're in this truth, you're going to have that mindset of what? Of the world. This is the thing of what? Separating from this world. And how, how the only way you can separate is drawing nigh unto Yahweh Shai daily. It's worked for me. I wouldn't be saying, see, I wouldn't be saying this. This ain't, this ain't a thing of, oh, no, no, looking down on brothers. No, it's not about looking down on any brother. And a true brotherly love, true brotherly love, is doing this work because you're teaching what's that showing charity what does charity do it covers a multitude of sins so if you're knowing this is charity and charity covers a multitude of sins wouldn't you want to be in this work efficiently and what does that word charity go into agape which is brotherly love a man that's lukewarm a man that goes missing for a week he doesn't care about the sheep he's not a brother that's a hireling in john 10 and 10 the hireling what the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling. The true, um, the true meaning of brotherly love is putting yourself out there to be ridiculed, to be hated. For the Akiam, this ain't just for me, it's for the Akiam, but it's for the Akiam that have the same mindset of Yahweh Shai, that want to get out of here. You can't call yourself a brother, but your actions show different. You don't really want to get out of it. And what shows that when men are lukewarm? It's, it's, that, that says everything. That's self-explanatory. It shows you don't want to get out of here. There may be particular scenarios where you may have particular harsh conditions. A family member may have died. It could be anything. But you still have to focus on the truth. Just because a family member may have died, anything could have happened. But does that stop you from pushing the truth? If that stops you, you know what that shows? That shows you were not really, not really built for the battle. Are you built for the battle? And that's why, oh man, that's, this truth is beautiful. It tells you in Corinthians that Yahweh Shai has used what the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. The ones that you think are wise, super duper wise, have all this knowledge, mighty. The Lord confounds them with things that are weak. Though those that are looked down upon, that's what Yahweh Shai uses. He uses what the underdogs. To prove everyone, that's how Yahweh Shai's power is shown. We're not in this for fame, we're not in this for vainglory, we're not in this for fame, we're in this to serve Yahweh Shai.
to the best of our ability. We can never do enough. I always feel like that. No matter how much videos I do, I can never do enough. I always want to do more. I'm always looking to progress. Not digress. You're not pushing this truth daily. You're, you're digressing because not, it's not going to give you the spirit to continue. You're going to get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. That's why the house of Sal is waxing stronger and the house of... So like yeah, the house of Sal is waxing weaker and the house of David is waxing stronger. All the time. And be not conformed to this whole, but be ye transformed. Changed. So when we wake up this truth, there's a change. And people can see that. Okay? And that's another thing. You can't, you can't care about the opinions of the world. Or what other people think. You know, you know you're serving your house to the best of your ability. That's all that matters. You can't be concerned with the opinions of the world. Because when you're transformed by the world, that means you're changed. Trans, which means change, informed. Through what? An image. You're transformed through what? The image of your house shy. You have a different spirit now than when you, even from when you first came into the truth, from a year, from two years to three years. You're growing. There's a change. You're anastrophe. Your talk, your talk is different. Your talk is not of the world. Your talk is not of other philosophies. You, you don't have corrupt communication coming out of your mouth. Your talk is of the scriptures. Before I came into the truth, my talk was, it was, Rarely, rarely of the scriptures. It was a foolish stuff, things of the world. Once you wake up, you become transformed. That's that change. If people can see that, people see it, people notice it. Family members, friends in the world. And guess what? There's, there's, some are going to, see, are going to see the good. Some are going to see bad because not everybody's going to look at your journey the same way. Certain people are going to look at your journey different. Some people are going to look at your journey in a negative way. Oh, but he was doing this. He was doing that. When the scriptures say, Yahabashai came for what? The sinners. He didn't came for the righteous. So if you're in that spirit, that's indicative of what spirit you're in. And that's the wrong spirit. You can repent. As long as you're alive, as long as you're breathing, as long as you're not blaspheming the Holy Spirit, you can repent. All right? Don't worry about the opinions of the world. Don't worry about the opinions of those that are lukewarm in this truth. Because someone that's lukewarm, you could be lukewarm in the spirit and you're lukewarm in your mind. So if you're lukewarm in your mind, that means you're partial. The Lord takes away that judgment, that true judgment from you. So let the scripture speak, transformed by the renewing of your mind. So your mind needs to be renewed in this truth. And how does one's mind get renewed? I'll just wake up. Oh, my, my mind's renewed today. No. Your mind's renewed by continually, continually going over the scriptures, studying it, applying it. All right? Applying the scriptures on a daily basis, living the scriptures. I always say this. This ain't a thing where I switch on the camera, turn back off the camera, go about my life, and start acting like a nigger. No, because guess what? The more you do, Something. So if, you're, if your eye is single upon this truth, it tells you that in Matthew 6 and 19, the eye is what? The, the light of the body is the eye. If the eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. So the more you're in this word, and it says wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So the more you're in this word, the more you're sincere, the more you're studying, the more you're applying, the word becomes you. It becomes a part of you. And that's that change. That's where the renewing of your mind starts. Because you were in this daily. You, might have, you may have had your shortcomings here and there. But you were in this daily. So Yahweh is pleased with that. He's like, look, look, this is, my, this is my servant. This is my servant. Leave him alone. This is my servant. I'm, I'm vouching for this individual. Yahushua takes great reverence in someone that's doing this in sincerity and that's doing this daily and it's giving it their all. Rather than someone that's just faking the funk. But she may prove what is good 
and acceptable and perfect, the will of the Most High. We can go also go to free as well. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly. And again, I want to say this. Don't mistake confidence with pride. Because you've got men that are on the highways. They're arrogant. They're looking down on other men. When you're confident and you realize Yahweh is on your side, you don't need to look down upon other men. When you've grown in this truth, you want to teach other men what, what you've been through so they are on a level as well. You want to share your experiences in this truth because not everybody has the same experience. And experience is by what? Are you going through stuff. So if you're not going through nothing, then you're not really being experienced in this truth if you're not going through anything. So that's what you want to share in this truth and get brothers on a level. Get them to see. Give them eyesight. Let them see what Yahweh was going through. Which many men, which is again, it's sad to say, they do a two hours, three hours video and they only mention Yahweh a few times. That's indicative of what spirit you're in. The scripture says, certain men only preach for envy and strife. There's a difference between correcting someone and preaching for envy and strife. All that's going to get you is what? Spewed out. And a lot of men have been spewed out already. Long time ago. Because they were not taking heed to what other men were saying. They were looking at the videos. Oh, F this guy. You know? You know, I don't got to listen to him. Now, now, look at their spirit. Just look at their spirit. Look at how they teach. Not taking anything seriously. So what do you think, what do you think Yahweh does to someone like that? Just abuse them out. This is serious. Romans 12. And we're going to go straight to yeah. For not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Because who woke us up is Yahweh Shai. And as he woke you up, he could also put you back to sleep. That's why we're not supposed to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. Yahweh Shai gives us this knowledge. And what you've been given, you build upon it. You build upon it. But to think soberly, okay, which is what being humble minded, according as the most have dealt to every man the measure of faith. So every man's been given a different measure of faith. It's never been my thing to look down on someone else. If they have less faith, my thing has been to teach this words and Lord willing, pre adventure, they hear these videos and they get built up. But certain men, if they're not in the right mindset and you're watching these videos, guess what? You're going to have a bad mind towards, towards these men and towards your shy. A lot of men watch these videos. Oh, it's just him. I don't got to listen to him. You can have that mindset, but the Lord's just going to jack you up. Because you're not taking heed and you, you're not considering that. What if this man's a man of the Lord? Men don't consider that. They're looking on face value. They're looking at the flesh. Look at the flesh too much. You're not looking at the spirit. You're not examining what the spirit is saying. You have many members, one body. So now let's go to Ecclesiastes 35. Give me just a minute. Okay. The offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat. Okay, and the altar, you can also equate that with the camp. And make if the altar fat. But it says what? The offering of the righteous. So that's what he's accepting. The offering of the righteous. So us, we're hoping that we're on the right side. Okay. And that's what this truth is about. Offerings. Make of the altar fat and the sweet saviour. Thereof is before the most high. And teaching this word. It says a sweet saviour. Unto Yahweh Shai. This is a sweet saviour. Not so much. What's it? Not so much the blood now. The blood sacrifice. Because we don't have to do that. Okay, which, guess what? I, I want to go a bit deep. The martyrs of Yahweh Shai, those that died for Yahweh Shai, they were martyrs. And what? That's their blood. The scriptures talk about the bloods of the saints. Those that were martyred. So the Lord, yeah, he does still require, he does still require, um, he does like the, 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 um, the blood, that sacrifice. But that's not needed in terms of um, turtle doves and all that. Okay. 
1 verse 7 the sacrifice of a just man is acceptable it says the sacrifice see it's letting you know the sacrifice of a just man and the man that's just is the one that Yahweh has found favor with so that sacrifice is just the sacrifice of a just man is acceptable so you got to be careful even when you're giving these doing these sacrifices you got to examine what what sacrifice are you giving are you just out there on a saturday you know messing about talking shit you know murmuring hating on every other brother's jealousy because there's a heavy spirit of jealousy heavy spirit of jealousy in this world even in the truth how are you going to be in the truth but have jealousy for another man envy that's the spirit of the world you know what that shows you have not put the spirit of the world off you still have the spirit of the world on you that's what happens when you don't teach this word every day when you don't put your mind in this word every day you're going to be en envying other brothers that are in the spirit because you're not in the spirit because you weren't doing the things that were required you were not giving them sacrifices and the memorial go back to memory rare shall not be for never be forgotten so the sacrifice of the wicked the sacrifice you're making we're making the hopeful elect are making shall never be forgotten it's going to be a constant memorial remember your labor is not in vain everything you've been through until now every sacrifice every time you've been out on the highways and byways the brothers who are actually out on the highways and byways not hidden in some forest your sacrifice is going to be remembered You understand? Here we go, verse 8. Give the Lord his honor with good with a good eye. Good eye goes into mind. So you want to have a good mind towards Yahweh Shai. Give him his, his honor. Re really, you say double honors to Yahweh to, to what the elder apostles. Really, the honors go to Yahweh Shai. That's who the, the honors belong to. Yahweh Shai. He's the one that wakes you up. He's the one that uses, uses the angel to tap into your mind. The moment you put the reverence of men over Yahweh Shai, that's dangerous. Because like I said, men, men are, are fickle. A man can change tomorrow. That goes for any of us. You could change tomorrow. A man can like you today and hate you tomorrow. Yeah, the Lord does not change. His word does not change. <laughs> Therefore, the sons of, you, of Jacob are not consumed. Okay. And correcting your brother, that's not hate. Okay. But if you don't have discernment, you're not going to be able to see particular things that are happening in the spirit. You know, you're telling someone, bro, bro, there's something there. There's something in the pathway. There's something in the pathway. There's, there's a snake in the pathway. No, 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 I don't see it. I don't see it. Okay, someone's driving. There's a barricade. There's a barricade in the pathway. There's a barricade there. You know, you shout to this guy in the car. There's a barricade there. There's, there's a brick wall there. I don't see it. I don't see it. That car, what's it going to do? Crush straight into that barricade. You're going to die. So this is what spirit men are in. You're warning someone there's a snake there. That person gets bit. Then when that person gets bit, you can't get mad. It's just that you didn't have the discernment. You didn't have the eyes to see it. So again, it don't, it don't stress me out. I don't get stressed. When men don't see particular things, it don't stress me out. And men, because they can't see it, what, what are they going to start saying? Oh, you're mental. You're losing your mind. No, it's just that you don't have discernment to see it. But guess what? Yahabashai will show you it in due time. In due time. Okay. Yahweh will show you who his men are and who his men ain't. If you can't see it now, then you are going to see it eventually. Okay. Give the Lord his honor with a good eye, a good mind, and diminish not the first fruits. Which, when it comes to sacrifice, what would they do? They give up what the first fruits, and the first fruits are represent the elect. 
of thine hands. And all that gives show a cheerful countenance. So you, you want to be somewhat cheerful. We're not going to be that all the time. You're going to have hints when you're in low moments. Because the scripture says, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. So you're going to have temptations. You're going to have trials. The scripture says, when you are brought down to a lower state, take it cheerfully. So there's going to be times where you're brought low. This is all a part of the truth. Okay, that's a part of that balance. All right. And dedicate thy tithes with gladness. Give unto the Most High according as he have enriched thee. So we're saying, give unto your house share according as he has enriched thee. Enriched thee with what? This knowledge, this wisdom and understanding. So as much as you've been given, you've got to give back. As much as he's enriched you, you've got to give that back. You don't just hold on to it. Guess what? That's a nigger. The scriptures tell you that as well in Ecclesiastes. A nigger is a nigger with his bread. A nigger is someone that's stingy. So again, how do you know if someone's generous as well? How do you know if someone... How do you know if someone's not a nigger? Because they're going to be generous with what they've been given. So a man that's diligent for the truth, he's definitely not a nigger. He's definitely not a nigger. Because he's giving. A man that's lukewarm, what's that? That's someone that's stingy. That's lazy. That's, that's what's it? Slothful. That's a nigger. Because he doesn't want to give. you got men that, that claim they know a whole lot, but they're not willing to, to teach. So that's indicative of what spirit you're in. And as thou hast gotten, give with a cheerful eye, a cheerful mind. Don't be in that spirit, oh no, I can't really. Oh no, not today, I can't be bothered. You're going to get them times where you're feeling tired. But you shouldn't be in that spirit overall because this is what we've been given. We've been given the treasures. We've been, give, we've been given these treasures. Precious than more anything out here. Precious, more precious than what the elites got. We have the treasures to life. But the only thing is that what we're still in captivity under this devil. But we have them treasures. We know now what it's like to live in a wicked world. So now we want righteousness to be established. Because we know. We've experienced wickedness. So now we want righteousness. We've learned both sides. For the Lord recompensive, as part of that judgment, reward if, and will give thee seven times as much. So it says, we'll give thee seven times as much. That means what you put in to this truth, you're going to get back out. So if you don't really care, you don't, you don't, you don't, excuse my language, you don't give a shit. Oh, you know, I don't really got to do lessons. You've got men that have deserted their pages. So I mean, they just, they just leave their pages. Nothing gets done. So what do you think, the, what do you think your house is going to do? He's going to leave you. He's going to desert you. Love is an action. Fair is an action. Brotherly love is an action. The same men that will say, you're not brotherly, or you hate your brother, how can a man hate his brother if he's showing the works by and his works by an action that shows brotherly love? Rob, you hate your brother when you're not doing the work, when you're not serving Yahweh Shai. That's you hating your brother when you're not serving Yahweh Shai. Loving your brother is more than how are you doing today? You having a how is your day been? That's good. You check up on brothers. That's part of loving your brothers. Loving your brother. People think loving your brother. Give me a bottle of water. See, see, this is how wicked men have become. They could tell you, they can't tell you, they, they can't tell you all the good you've done. They'll tell you the bad you've done, but they can't tell you the good you've done. Men won't tell you that. Okay. But that's all right. Because the law is going to judge accordingly. And in due time, you're going to see. Okay. I don't hold grudges. It ain't about holding grudges. It's about doing the work of Yahweh Shai. This is not personal. This is not about me. It's about you and you building up your relationship between you and Yahweh Shai. That's what I want you to do. All right? And you doing that, you're going to be able to see things clearer. 
Because when that time comes, like I said, when that time presents itself of martial law, Jacob's trouble, guess what? You may not be amongst most of the, you're not going to be around other Akiam. YouTube shut off. So then it's going to, it's going to come to the point, was you really building up your relationship? What was you doing? All right, you were going to camp, you were being brotherly, all these things. That was good because that's necessary. But when it came to you and your Havashai, what was you doing? Like, like again, Saturday's gone. So all throughout the week, what is it about? You building up that relationship is necessary for you and your Havashai. Nobody else can do it except from you. And don't take that the wrong way. If you take that the wrong way, it's because you're not spiritual. Because a man would take that and say, "Oh, what? What? What, what does he think? Does he? Does he think he's um? What's it? What, what they say? Does he think he's Moses? That the Most High is dealing with him? No, 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 no. Yeah, Yahushua deals with men on a one-to-one -one basis. Because if Yahushua is not dealing with men on a one-to-one -one basis, then guess what that means? That means men are dealing with you. You see what I mean? If, if you have a shape dealing with you on a one-to-one -one basis, that means men are dealing with you. And that's it. So where's your trust? Where's your hope? I hope this is edifying. Verse 12. We still want Ecclesiastes 35 because there's so much meat. Bear me just a minute. Do, do not think to corrupt with gifts. Okay. Because certain men would do things... Just so they can say, well, I've done this for you. Don't think to corrupt with gifts. Because gifts blind the eyes of what? The, um, the judges. Bribery, payoffs. It can that can blind your eyes where you cannot no longer approve. I'm not going to take a gift. Nobody's got um, a tape on my mouth. A gag order. Ah, oh, no, I can't speak about that. You know, don't speak about this topic. I'm free to speak about any topic in the scriptures. Nobody's got a, a, what, what, a battery pack in my back. This this what you're saying in this truth. Are we still careful on what we say? Yes, we still gotta be careful because the scriptures tell you that. About the horse in um James, the, the horse, you know, the bridling of the tongue. But you gotta trust and you gotta pray. Even before you do the lessons, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shem, make sure my words are acceptable and I say the right thing. Alright. Come on now. Do not think to corrupt with gifts for such. He will not receive okay so this ain't nothing oh yeah I give gifts I give types it's bigger than that all right and trust not to unrighteous sacrifices and what what I'm seeing men are gonna see men are gonna say oh it's personal he's teaching for strife what I'm seeing is not every man's sacrifice is a righteous sacrifice certain men they're putting out what unrighteous sacrifice example what's the unrighteous sacrifice you go missing for a whole week, five days, two days, then you come to camp. Shalom, but you're in a wicked spirit. You're prophesying in a wicked spirit, if you are even prophesying. That's an unrighteous sacrifice. Because throughout all the week, you wasn't, you, wasn't do, you wasn't doing anything. For the Lord, is a, for the Lord Jehovah Shai is a judge, the ultimate judge. And with him is no respect of persons. So with Yahweh Shai, there's no respect of persons. None. All right? Bear me just a minute. And with Yahweh Shai, there's no respect of persons. All right? None at all. The Lord judges every man accordingly. Okay? Where have you been in this truth? 15 years. 20 years. Because that gets to a lot of men's head as well. Ah, I've been in this truth 15 years. You know? Don't tell me nothing. Shut the fuck up. Don't tell me nothing. You know? You can't tell me. That's very, that's very, very, that's a dangerous position to be in. If a man, even a man could be in this truth one year, a man could just come into this truth. If he's saying something that's according to the scriptures and it's true and it could even be cutting you, you got to take that on board. You can't say, well, you just came in. You only been here for five minutes. There's, there's, there's a reverence you've got to have respect for elder men in the truth. But again, you can't be in that spirit of nah. You know, I can't listen to him. Jeremiah was a young man. Okay. Jeremiah was a young man. He was reproving kings. 
He had to. And that's what spirit was given to him. And guess who, guess who gave him that spirit? Yahabashai. He was not taking authority upon himself. Yahabashai gave him that spirit for him to do that. To have that authority. Men, it's like men don't want you to have no authority in the spirit. It's Yahabashai that gives you that authority. And with him is no respect of persons. That's a dangerous spirit to have respect of persons. That's a dangerous spirit to be in. Because that means he can't judge. He will not accept any person. It's lucky he will not accept any person against the poor man. But he will hear the prayer of the oppressed. Okay. Those that are being afflicted and oppressed by the wicked. Okay. That's why this, this truth is so, 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 so serious. So serious. All right. And not all of our people are going to get this truth. And if you've been teaching, example, if you've been teaching for two, three, four years, five years, three months you're teaching someone, someone comes to the camp and you can see they're just not getting it. You have to move on. You see, it's, it's, they're not getting it. It goes in one ear. And it comes straight out the other. You have to move on because this individual, he's been blinded. And if you're just having this man around because, ah, uh, but he's an Israelite. I mean, guess what? You're not being spiritual. But he's an Israelite. We all need to come together. The scriptures don't say that. Two thirds shall be cut off. One part shall be, what, one part in Zechariah? The two thirds shall be cut off in the land of America and the wicked of our nation as well that are scattered. So you can't be in that spirit. Ah, oh, but you know, he's an Israelite. He's an Israelite now. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. He's an Israelite. But he doesn't he doesn't understand. The Lord has not given him the, the, the truth. So he's blinded. So if he's blinded, when the words come out, what's his reaction going to be that someone that's blinded, someone that doesn't understand? It's going to be a reaction of bitterness, envy, and anger. Because they don't understand the truth. And the scriptures tell you that in Corinthians. You might as well go to that. This is 2 Corinthians. And let's start at 4. Wherefore, seeing we, we have the, this ministry, this beautiful ministry, which is a blessing. As we have received mercy, we faint not. And how we receive mercy through this word and the ministry. So you have the ministry. Don't take that for granted. Use it. And when you're not around the ministry, still don't take it for granted. Use, use, the, use these words. Even when you're not around Akiyam. We faint not. So this ain't no time for fainting. Time to get stronger in the spirit. But have renounced... To make known, renounce me, to make known the hidden things of dishonesty. And sadly to say, you still got a lot of men teaching this word in dishonesty. But again, I can point, I can, I can point it out. So a man pointing that out, is that wicked? No, that's just a man pointing out that there's men teaching what? Dishonestly. But again, whether I say it or not, it doesn't matter because you have a shy. What happens to men that are teaching dishonestly? They get what? They get put out of the truth. Eventually, you're not going to see them anymore. And when I mean put out the truth, I mean put out the truth. No more videos, nothing. They're no longer going to believe. Yahushua is going to do something where he's going to cause these men that are teaching this word in dishonesty to sling their hook, which is um, English slang. Okay, sling your hook to, to go missing, to, to, to go away. Okay. Whew, bear with just a minute. But have announced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling, a, handling the word of, the, of Yahweh Shai deceitfully. It says something in Job. Cursed be he that keepeth his sword back from blood. One of my favorite scriptures. What's keeping your sword back from blood? The sword is these scriptures. Not a physical sword. So when you don't really want to teach this word. When you could just go missing. That's you keeping your sword back from blood. And this is a war. Like I said. Are you built for the battle? In battle you have a sword. In battle. What good is a sword if you're not using the sword? And you've got to be careful how you use that sword because it's known as a two-edged sword. So if you're not using the sword correctly, you can also cut yourself. Okay. 
And it says, and, and he that holdeth his what? 